Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First, I thank the people and government of China for inviting us for this very important and historic high-level meeting focusing on high-quality belt and road cooperation and for their warm welcome extended to all of us. I also acknowledge the deep appreciation and leadership of the FOCA co-chairs and the work done by the Secretariat to diligently coordinate all the preparatory activities which have made this high-level meeting possible. Further, I take this opportunity to commend the strong vision and effective leadership through which His Excellency President Xi Jinping has made unique contributions to the strengthening of cooperation between Africa and China, particularly through the Belt and Road Initiative and the four global initiatives which encompass a broad range of transformative undertakings in development, security, and culture. And for the wide-ranging statement on the 10-point partnership action plan that encompasses China's support for Africa to access concessional resources and credit facilities, and for opening up China's market to those of us in the African continent. It is a measure of true friendship that our agricultural produce can access Chinese markets. Without a doubt, the impact of the programs and projects under BRI is demonstrable, significant, and positive across the African continent from north to south and from east to west. In Kenya, for example, we have, with the support of, and funding of China under BRI, completed 600 kilometers of standard gauge railway. We have completed phase one of Lamu port. We have also completed a modern oil terminal in the port city of Mombasa, the expressway, and we have also completed thousands of kilometers of road connecting rural to urban Kenya, farms to markets, and transporting raw materials to manufacturing industries. The relationship between China and Africa, and Kenya by in specific, is so real that this year, early this year, when I went to one of our rural towns, and the citizens were asking me for an airstrip, when I asked them where they wanted to travel to, if the airstrip is built, they said they wanted to travel to China. And when I later found out, it was because the road in their neighborhood had been built with Chinese support, with a Chinese contractor. That is the depth of the relationship between China and our continent. As I underscore the enormous potential of BRI and acknowledge that the cooperation between Africa and China under the FOCAC framework is doing the best it can and actually yielding results, it is critical to also appreciate that Belt and Road Initiative's full promise has been severely undermined by major threats, key among them being severe global pandemics, shocks and wars, and an unjust international financial system, and climate change, which have subjected our economies to considerable stress and caused many developing economies, especially the least developed countries, majority of which are in Africa, to struggle under massive debt. In turn, this undesirable state of affairs has had the negative effect of making African countries unable to fully tap into the vast array of opportunities presented by the Belt and Road Initiative. It is for this reason that in keeping with the best spirit of 
South-South solidarity, I respectfully call on each one of you, Your Excellencies, to lend your full support to China and Africa to work closely together on the following four critical areas. First, to urgently collaborate in championing a fair international financial system that enables Africa and other countries in the global south to benefit from available resources and opportunities. China, as a friend of Africa, should rally the rest of their shareholders to double their contributions to the multilateral development facilities like IDA 21, <coughs> Africa Development uh, Bank's replenishment program, as well as IMF's special drawing rights to enable more African countries access concessional funding to support economies that are heavily affected. We received the news this morning of President Xi's statement on their contribution in this respect with a lot of gratitude. The second critical area requiring China's close collaboration is to work with Africa on debt treatment generally, and in particular, reprofiling of debt to incorporate a longer grace period and longer tenure for both existing and future financial facilities to provide fiscal space for uptake of urgent development financing in social, in matters infrastructure, and other sectors critical for stabilizing Africa's economies. Closely related to this is the urgent need for collaboration in reforming the international credit rating and debt sustainability systems. In this connection, I am happy to share with you that with the support of Africa Development Bank and other African multilateral banks, we shall be holding the first African meeting in Congo Brazzaville next month to establish parameters for the proper evaluation of African assets and gross domestic product, and new modalities for determining Africa's debt sustainability using Africa's real wealth. We therefore fully appreciate the promise of the Belt and Road Initiative to transform Africa through road, rail, and air connectivity, and other infrastructures, thereby unlocking the vast potential for intra-Africa trade from its present low level of 15%, and to facilitate the actualization of the Africa continental free trade area. This will enable Africa unleash its huge manufacturing potential by deploying our enormous renewable energy assets and significant mineral resources to power the continent's ambitious drive to sustainable growth and inclusive prosperity. In recognition of this undeniable promise, we are, for instance, engaging China on extending the Standard Gate Railway from Kenya through Uganda Rwanda, Burundi, the DRC, into Congo Brazzaville, thereby linking the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. When it is finally implemented, this single project under BRI will deliver for our nations and peoples unprecedented transformation. This gives us an outline of the magnitude of the entire BRI and the scale of possibilities that will come with it.